Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar. Today we are going to discuss the best practices for internal and company-wide request forms. I would like to start our webinar with introducing myself. My name is Artem and I'm a customer success manager here at Trike. With me here is Irina, who is also a customer success manager. The main goal of our roles is to help you use Rike in the most efficient way. Our webinar is going to take about an hour of your time and we will finish with a Q&A session. Please let me know if you cannot hear me well uh, or do not see the presentation that I'm showing, so I will do my best to fix that. Before we begin, I would like to launch a small and very simple poll uh, to find out if you are currently using request forms. Uh, this poll will just take about uh, 30 seconds of your time. Please add your replies, responses right now. As you can see, about 77% of you uh, are currently using request forms, which is great. So we hope that you will still uh, find a lot of value during today's session. And we are ready to continue. So uh, during the work week, we keep receiving requests from all kinds of different sources. Our team members, colleagues, uh, from other teams and departments, and of course, external stakeholders. These requests arrive from different sources, calls, emails. They can also emerge as actionable results of the meetings you participate in. As the number of the incoming requests keeps growing, it becomes more and more challenging to process them. What is also very inconvenient is that these requests keep arriving in all kinds of different formats. It is often the case when the information provided is insufficient to process the request, so a need arises to come back to the requester for the missing pieces. Here is a good example. You are sitting together with the creative team at the end of the meeting and discussing the brochure that needs to be produced for the client. What's the common phrase the designers are used to hearing? I'm sure you have guessed it. Make it look awesome. And obviously, awesome is not a step-by-step -step guide the designers can follow. So instead of having a long conversation on what exactly needs to be done um, and what exactly do you want the brochure to look like, the designers simply ask you to fill in a request form in Rike, containing all the questions they need you to answer. Let's see how the combination of Rike request forms and templates can help you address these issues and what are the other benefits of using them. Benefit number one, prioritizing and reporting become easier. All the incoming requests fall into a predetermined place that you define when the form is built. You have a folder or several if necessary, where all the requests are conveniently organized and structured. You can then add an extra level of transparency by adding an incoming request widget to your team dashboard. We are going to show you actually how it can be done during the, today's webinar. Uh, and reports will help to see the full picture of how the team is progressing with the requests. Benefit number two. Requesters don't forget to enter all the necessary data. It's always easier to fill in a form containing predetermined questions rather than trying to remember what information is required for a project or a certain activity to be initiated. And finally, the third one, the forms add an extra level of automation. The form can trigger a task or a project from a predetermined template. The tasks can be already assigned to the team members responsible for working on them. When the work is triggered, all the SINEs receive notifications from the right bot, making it impossible to miss any items that require their attention. You can go even further and create a dynamic request form, which enables you to tag the items created into specific folders, depending on the answers the requester provides. You will not spend your time on tagging. Rike will do it for you. Now let's move to the demo account, learn the best practices, and see the request forms in action. 
We're sure many of you have faced the problem of managing different types of employees' absence, like PTOs, work from home, and others. Managers need to coordinate the time of several team members simultaneously to ensure no deadlines are missed, since even one team member absence can sometimes negatively affect an important project run. Those emails for approval keep coming daily and weekly, and then all the approved cases need to be passed over to HR so that they could arrange all the documents and payments if needed. And what if you manage people from several offices, or if there are several different HR specialists responsible? Real headache, right? If you want all such requests full and get stored in one place with optional automated assignment and distribution based on departments, locations, HR specialists, and so on, Rike request forms can become a real painkiller for you. Let's start with a simple example and build a form that will allow the members of your team request a paid time off. I click on my name and go to account management now. Here I choose the Request Forms tab on the left-hand side panel and I click Plus New Form button and enter the name Vacation Request. Now before we do anything else, let's brainstorm a bit on what information we want to get from a person submitting this form. Obviously, we need a name, start and end dates of the PDO, and also we need to know the department he or she comes from. Finally, we need to get the office the employee comes from, because different offices have different HR specialists responsible for processing the PDO requests. All right, we now know everything we need to ask and let's start building the form. For the first question that we will call full name, we take a short answer question type and we'll map it to the title of the task that is going to be created. Don't forget that for each question that is not optional, you need to check the required checkbox so that the form will not be submittable unless the answer is provided. The second and third questions will be desired start date and desired due date. In both cases, we are going to use the date question type, just like this. And then we will map it those answers to the start and finish date of the task accordingly. Just like this. We will call the fourth question, choose your department. For this one, we will choose the drop-down question because we want the employee to select the option from a predetermined list. Let's enter the possible options here. Let it be marketing, analytics, sales, IT ops, human resources, and operations. Now we're going to add a level of complexity. Each time an employee makes a request for a PTO, that request needs to be approved by the head of the department. We would like to reflect that process in our form. So we are going to add a conditional branch to each of the options. I click this arrow button and choose option Add Assignee. For every department, we are going to select its hand. Depending on the requester's choice, a particular head of the department is going to be assigned to the task triggered by the form to approve it. Let's finish adding the people responsible to each of our options so that we make sure that everyone is covered. Okay, great. So now we are moving to the fifth question. Let it call your office. We will also choose the drop-down question type here. And we'll enter the locations as the available options. Chicago, New York, and Boulder. Let's also add some conditions here. Depending on the option selected, we need the task triggered by the form to fall into the HR folder of the corresponding office. I click the arrow button next to each of the answers, choose the Add Parent folder, 
and select the corresponding folder. So as you can see, yeah, here when I start typing the name of the necessary folder, I see um, three options, right? Each option goes for each of the offices. All right, so we have added all the necessary questions and now we are moving to the forum settings. The first thing that we need to choose here is whether the forum is going to be internal or external. Due to the fact that this forum is going to be used only by the employees of our organization and all of them obviously are using Rike, we will make it internal. Now we need to choose what's going to happen when the form is submitted. Our case is very simple. We want a task to be created and to be placed into a corresponding office folder. We're not going to change any of the settings here because we have already specified particular conditional settings directly in the questions. Let's polish our form with a small finishing touch. We are going to add a note for the e-plays about our company's policy on PTO requests. So I go to the description area located below the form's name and print the form needs to be submitted at least two weeks prior to the desired start date of the vacation. So that the employees have this information in hand before proceeding with the request. Now we're good to go and click publish. The form is now created. Let's give it a try and fill it out correct. Fill it out quickly. Just a second. Okay, so here is our form. Let's quickly type in some information here so that we could check on the task that will be created after this form submission. Okay. So, as you can see, here is the task with the creation of which was triggered by the submission of this form. And this task was created at the designated folder and it also received its assignee. The task due dates reflect the dates of the employee's desired time off. And also this task received the first status from the HR workflow. This could also be very helpful for you to create it in advance and apply to the necessary folders. With the help of this form, now all the work with PTO requests in your company is correctly distributed and stored in correspondent folders. In the same way, you can uh, add structure and automation to many other common company-wide processes. We will start with an administrative request. Life of an office manager sometimes may look like a real mess with all the requests that come through several channels, emails, corporate messages, messengers, or even chats in the kitchen. Someone needs to have a chair fixed. The other one is not happy with the coffee beans you are ordering and dozens of other requests that come from different departments. So I'm, I'm going to open uh, this form from the user perspective. So it is this one called employee administrative request. So with the help of this form, uh, it gets much easier to collect all the employees needs in one place, group and prioritize them, track the most requested items and reflect all completed requests. So as I said, we're showing you from the user's perspective, but if you have any questions on how the form is set up, then please type your questions into the question box and we will be happy to return to them at the end of the webinar. So, uh, right below uh, the title, uh, you can see uh, the description field, uh, which is populated with a tip that we have left uh, for the uh, requesters. So, uh, this particular description uh, covers the uh, ETA for uh, processing the request. So, in this particular example, it's two working days. Uh, so. 
if that's applicable start uh, your form with the questions about location so I uh, ch choose my location and I choose let's say Chicago and I click next so uh, then it is a great idea uh, to define some options for the request type here I have order and purchase broken swag for the clients uh, so that uh, it's later easier for you to track those request types or distribute them depending on the types if there are different people covering for each of those types uh, okay I'll just choose order and purchase and here uh, you can see uh, the field to provide a short description. You can then, for example, map it to the title so that SNE understands the exact need at the first glance. And then the field to add any descriptive comments. Uh, then the form is finished with the question about the department. When building the form, you also add the room numbers like this. Um, so it is not necessary to check on uh, that on the moment of de delivery and also the deadline for the request which is also a date question type as you can see uh, in the account all the administrative requests are organized by a particular folder so I have broken I have purchased and um, uh, and order and I have swag for the clients so again if a person is responsible for a particular ca category that person can just open the corresponding folder and uh, get all the requests from a single place all right so this is everything about administrative requests and we are moving to our third example for today Okay, thank you, Artem. Another process that can be simplified with the help of request forms is new hurry setup. Usually, it's several people from different departments involved into this process and quite a number of actions that they need to perform, right? So this is set up the place and software, give access to the necessary resources and groups, arrange onboarding and many others. So let's have a look at a request form that could add some structure to all of this. We will start with the name of the newbie, of course and will pass to the location if applicable. If the processes differ for the locations you have, or different teams require different level of product knowledge, and you have several options of onboarding materials for that, then it will be a good idea to include this question to the form as well, just as I did. And now we get to the questions for some general information about the employee. The department, job title, manager, first working day, and the groups this person needs to be added to. The last part contains some detailed questions on specific items that this person is supposed to get in order to perform his work, hardware and software requirements. Checkboxes will be the best options option to be used here. A great idea here will also be to make this form trigger a project from template. This project will contain the necessary actions to be taken and they will have their assignees from the very beginning. So once the form is submitted, HR will have the necessary information to arrange the documents, training team will know the requirements for the onboarding and IT ops will start with setting up devices. As simple as that, all the necessary information is just in one place, organized properly, and people are synced on the project from the very beginning. Marketing requests are probably the most often used ones. So when the process of managing the intake is arranged properly, internal collaboration obviously improves drastically. Other departments get happy because they know their requests will be handled in an organized and timely manner, and they can also see what has already been done by simply checking on the task or project status and the description. Please always keep in mind that a request form is a tool for you to get all the necessary information up front to get the job done. So brainstorm for the proper questions that could help you and the requester provide you with the necessary bits of information. Here I have an example of how a marketing email campaign request form might look like.
It's not that long and mostly contains open questions with paragraph field type in the answer box. This will enable the requester to provide his or her vision of what the delivery should look like and for you to better understand the expectations. The form is that in our example, uh, let's the requesters set in and forget it because when the form is submitted, their work is done. So they can turn their attention to other projects. The questions I have included in this form are campaign name, the target audience, campaign objectives, so these are both the purpose of the campaign and the expected results, example of how this email could look like, or also that would be possible to provide some ideas here or bullet points, and finally, the desirable date for this campaign to be launched. So now I'm passing the word to Artem to cover the last best practice. Okay, thanks, Serena. And we are proceeding to our fifth form. I see there are some questions that you have already asked. And as I promised, we're going to go through them at the end of the webinar. So uh, could you play with the fonts and colors a bit? Familiar with this phrase? Or maybe you have faced the situations when the first draft of a design is sent to the requester after several days or even weeks of hard work and have it returned back with so many comments and changes that it hardly resembles the project that was initially requested. The last form we are going to talk about today is Creative Brief Request Form. With the help of it, the team will no longer receive any vague requests, which cause a lot of stress and affect the project run and outcomes. Now your team will have a clear project scope, as well as context and timeline, which will make it possible to allocate their resources effectively and spend more time on actually creating work rather than trying to figure out what exactly is needed. So start with outlining the request with the high level questions. As you can see, the first question here is job name. And we have three categories available here. Graphic design, motion design, and web design. Of course, we do not want to limit you with these options. We just provided them for this example. Then let me choose one of the categories. I'm going to go with the graphic design. Uh, key stakeholders will be the uh, creative team and let's say the sales team who will also need to approve uh, everything uh, with the client uh, and now we need to give our request a title uh, please pay attention to this description at the bottom of the title of your request field so um, it gives some tip on how the um, title of the form should be formulated which uh, will actually help you as the creative team to just understand what exactly needs to be done so it says action then asset that name so um, I'm going to call it create a brochure um, for the product launch okay so as you can see there is a next button here so it means that this form contains several pages so when I click next, it takes me to the page that uh, has some uh, additional questions uh, that allow uh, the requester to elaborate on what exactly he or she needs uh, when he or she uh, has selected that particular category. So in our example, it is uh, a drop down uh, that is related to graphic design. So I'm going to choose the illustration category here. And again, Due to the fact that I need some additional information from the requester, uh, I have added the third page to this form and I click next again. All right. So in the description, um, you can specify what exactly you expect the requester to tell you here. So the question is about objective or call to action is kept as a separate question as well as target audience so that these important bits of information are not lost. Uh, Rack also enables you to add a possibility to attach files. So as you can see here, I have an attachments question type called upload any samples. 
So uh, the request form can be really helpful when it comes to this type of request. So this will enable the requester to attach some designs that he likes or maybe those that he doesn't like at all. Um, and your team will be happy to have those samples in hands and this will cut the time and efforts to create a deliverable that meets the needs. And on the last part of the form, we pass to execution specifications, timeframes, and the list of campaign dependencies, if any. Afterwards, the form can be successfully submitted. All right, so these are the five examples that I wanted uh, to cover today with Irina, and she will now provide some additional insights on how you can monitor your incoming uh, requests and the, the ones that are currently in work. Yeah, first we will talk about the dashboards. Yeah, because dashboard can serve as a great helping tool for a team leader or for a traffic manager when it comes to tracking big loads of incoming work and its distribution. Let's take the marketing email campaign requests as an example. I have previously built a dashboard, so let's open it. Here it is. All the requests fall into the designated folder and I have created a separate widget based on it. Yeah, this is the first one with incoming requests. So now it's easier to allocate resources for them just from one place. And also there are a couple of widgets with the most important statuses in progress and approved to monitor the running projects and ensure they're launched on time. Completed this week widget will help to see how well the team is going with the scheduled plan for the week. What if you need some more detailed understanding of how work is being performed or has been performed historically with a particular type of request? Why not build a report tailored to your requirements? You will have all the necessary information to analyze just in one place. Here is a report that I have created to track all the launched email campaigns that my team worked on during this quarter. Now, with the help of this report, I can check how many of those completed projects were launched on time. Yeah, as you can see, there are three of them that had some delays. So now I can brainstorm for the ways to improve current practices just to ensure that none of such situations happen in the future. All right, guys. So we would like to finish with providing you a practical list that you will be able to use to quickly build a super efficient request form. So whenever you need to create a new form, simply go through that list and check if you have not forget, forgotten anything. By the way, guys, this list can be downloaded from the handout section of the webinar interface. So feel free to do that right now or later during this webinar. So you will be able to just use it whenever you need to build a new form um, in Rike or revise the ones that you have already created. So I will just go through each of the checkboxes to let you understand what needs to be um, kept in mind. So checkbox number one. Your form has a clear self-explanatory name. It is very important that the form is named properly so your team members don't waste time looking for it in the long list in case you have a lot of forms. By the way, guys, if you have uh, noticed that, we have done that with the forms that we have demonstrated to you during this webinar. So as you can see, each of these five forms including the ones that we uh, the one that we have created with you together have numbers in the beginning so they all appear at the top of the list and I, we do not waste your time just looking for them in this huge list all right uh, so um, uh, checkbox number two you are using the forms description fields when you have a chance to leave some useful tips on how to use the form don't waste it each form has several fields that you can utilize, starting with the general field uh, below the form's description uh, that you can use to describe what the form is for, uh, and the specific fields to each question 
that can help the requester understand the data that should be inputted. If you remember, um, we were showing you one of the examples when um, the specific directions in brackets were provided. So the person knows exactly uh, how the title of the form should be built. Uh, question Checkbox number three, your form has an optimal number of questions. It is important to keep the balance when building the form. On one side, it needs to contain all the necessary questions, so no additional questions need to be asked later, and the activity triggered by the form can start without any delays. From the other side, the form should not be overloaded with the questions that are not necessary or that are confusing the requester. Remember that you can hide optional questions under the conditional branches. Again, we have demonstrated uh, this to you when we were building the first form. Checkbox number four. You have prepared a dedicated folder for all the incoming requests. Remember that forms work best when they are a part of a whole, well-built and organized ecosystem that streamlines the intake process. One of the essential components of that system is a folder where all the incoming requests fall into. It helps you to avoid the situation when you spend time searching for a particular request that fell somewhere over there. And finally, chain box number five, you have utilized all of the form's automation capabilities. The time you invest during the stage of building the form pays off well later. Don't forget that the drop-down and checkbox field types grant you the opportunity to map the answers to particular RIC attributes like parent folders, SNEs, or custom fields. All right, guys, uh, I would like to repeat that this checklist can be downloaded from the uh, handout section of the webinar interface. Feel free to do that right now um, and um, you will be able to use it later. So now we have two more things that uh, are left. The best thing, of course, is the Q&A session that is starting right now. And at the end, we will also provide you with the list of several additional help resources. So, question number one. It is from Nelia, and uh, the question is, is it possible to have the question lead to another set of questions if responded a certain way? Yes, the answer is yes, and this is a great question, Nelia. So, basically, um, let me go to account management, so I, I will show you how it is done on the example of one of our forms. Uh, so, for example, creative brief form. Uh, as you can see, the job name question is actually a conditional question and depending on the answer the requester provides, he or she is taken to a particular page of this request form. So, uh, if you remember when I was submitting this form from the user's perspective, I have selected the graphic design um, answer, so I was taken to page number two. But if I, have, if I have selected the motion design category instead, then I would have been taken to page number three and I would see uh, totally uh, different questions. Uh, so, yes, the answer is yes, Nelly. Um, so, we have another question asked by Emily. There are two ways to share a form, specific users or enable public link. When we choose enable to public, uh, there is a link provided. Is there a link we can get when we are just sharing it with specific users? Well, the answer is yes as well. So if you create, for example, an internal request form, right? So let me just go to it. Let me return to the list. And I choose the vacation request, which is an internal form. So actually, I am able to get a link to this form. So I copy it like this. And uh, also, if I open the link uh, directly from the uh, account, I can also get that link. So I get it, I copy it, and afterwards I'm able to actually paste it into any of the tasks or folders. So let me just open this folder. And I'm pasting the link to the request form into the description of the folder. So the answer is yes, Emily, and this is exactly how it can be done.
All right, um, we have another question from Bia Hoff. Uh, hello, this is really helpful. When adding a due date to a request form for my team, uh, it is when a piece of writing or editing is due date to be finished. We often find that people request writing without giving us enough days to complete it. Is there a way of helping people to choose the appropriate due date from the form? Well, this is a good one and... Um, Sadly, uh, at the moment, you cannot set particular restrictions when people are uh, submitting the form. But this is exactly why we have uh, highlighted several times uh, the necessity to add comments uh, to um, um, the questions and to the form itself. So, for example, we at Trike uh, have a request form that we use to request some proofreading from the copywriters team. So, the description of that form uh, specifies that we need to give our copywriters at least three days for any proofreading tasks that need to be performed. So, basically, this is what I can uh, recommend you. Okay, so now we pass to the next question, and this one comes from Eric. Uh, is it possible from one request form to create multiple projects or sub-projects? So um, this depends on what you mean here. Um, one form, the submission of one form can trigger only one item creation, right? So be it a task or a project, but you can make a form uh, trigger creation of projects in different locations, right? And these are examples that we have previously uh, looked at. Yeah, uh, for example, when you have some separate folders for different locations of yours or different offices or different departments, right? Uh, each time uh, or different de designs as in our case, right? You can add this several locations for the project or a task to be created in. As simple as that, right? Just click on the plus and you can add one more location or two or three more locations for the same project to be created in. All right, guys, let's see the next question. Um, we have a question from Sasha. How do you manage being able to only have one confirmation email that applies to multiple forms? Uh, why doesn't uh, Rike allow users to create custom email that is unique uh, to each form? Uh, well, this is a very interesting suggestion, Sasha. So what I can promise you is that we are going to um, forward this um, um, feedback to our development team who is working on the request forms and maybe they will um, include this information in future releases. Okay, let me cover the next question, which is from Peter. Can a request ask for a specific document to attach? The answer is yes, it is possible. So as we have previously shown, uh, there is a possibility to add a question with the possibility to attach files to it, right? And if there is a specific format of the document, yeah, the file type, you can also specify it when building the question. So let me just demonstrate it to you, right? So here we are in one of our forums, just a second. Let's just create one question here. And when you're choosing those field types, yeah, there is this file attachments type. So here you type your question. I don't know, please um, attach, sorry, attach a doc format file. And then the uh, requesters, right, those people who will be uh, filling out this form will be able to proceed with the doc file attachment here, just as you have requested. All right. 
let's move to the next one by the way guys thank you so much for being that active during our webinar it's always great when you have so many questions so the next question uh, the next question we have is from ella uh, could you please go over the smoothest way to link from answers to custom fields especially multiple choice type i always get hung up on those steps and i'm trying to see the best way right order for those steps to be done uh, well, the, the, I uh, thank you for this question, Ella, and I agree that sometimes it may seem a little bit tricky. So uh, step one would be to uh, add the necessary custom field uh, to the folder. Uh, let me actually recall what questions we had in uh, one of our um, forms. For example, this one that we have created together. So it's vacation request. So let's think what it can include so um <laughs> all right i'm going to add another question here uh, based on let's say marketing department so um i think i've i've had some custom fields on the level of this department let me check so there is, there is the field actual budget um, okay, let, let me just uh, show you with some example with the budget. So uh, you need uh, step one would be making sure that the uh, folder where your request is going to fall into uh, has those custom fields added. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you that on the example of the vacation request uh, form. And I, I will just, for this particular example, select the marketing department folder as the parent folder. So marketing. Um, all right, here it is. So now we have specified a particular folder that has custom fields enabled. So now we are adding an additional question. Let it be drop down question type. So when I add a particular option, let's, let's just call it option A. So um, I'm going to, let me just delete this question for a moment. Um, and I'm going to add the question called budget. So I should be able to see uh, the field right now. This is weird, okay. Just give me a second. Um, so it should already include these fields. Hmm. Let me reload the form. So I will check it. So again, vacation request. I will again select marketing department. Yeah, as you can see, it can be uh, sometimes even tricky for us. Sorry about this short delay. So let me just save the form, go back to it. Add a question and get the field. Well, this is this is weird why it is behaving like this at the moment. So okay, so just uh, we we are not delaying everyone. Uh, so we will just uh, go back to you, Ella. We um, will just send an email with a specific explanation. So so j we just uh, are able to ask additional questions. Sorry for sorry for this. Okay, uh, so uh, we are moving to the next um, question, and it is from Carrie Ann. Are there best practices for handling requests that have multiple components? For example, they need an ad, email, and social media campaign, but each are assigned to different people. This may change each time. Yeah, so actually this can be done. And uh, the best thing, Karen, to keep in mind here is that you need to choose either a drop-down question type or checkbox question type for these questions. And then depending on the option the users select, uh, you can um, set the, uh, up the form in the way so it will trigger different types of projects and be assigned to different people. So, for example, if I just uh, reopen uh, this particular, oh, I'm sorry, if I reopen this particular form uh, and uh, 
uh, I see, um, I check one of the questions. So as you can see, I have added particular assignees depending on the option selected and I can do pretty much the same um, with the um, uh, form settings. So as you can see, the default uh, option here is for the task to be created, but if we choose the creation of a project from template, then depending on the answer, we can actually choose also uh, a different template. So basically, for any option that is selected, uh, the form can trigger the creation of a separate project with a separate owner. I hope I was clear about that. All right. Okay, so we have a question from Sara. How can I create a request form? Is this an add-on or something else? And where can I find the request form? So um, the thing here is that only the admins of accounts are those people who can create a request form. Right, so uh, this button when you go to your, uh, when you click on your uh, profile picture in the right upper corner, only admins have this possibility to choose account management. And there they will see this button to manage the request forms. So there is no add on needed here, and all requests, like request forms, are available on all the subscriptions starting from business, right? The reason why you probably do not see this button is that you are just the user on the account, not an admin, and you as the user can just see the list of all the um, of all the request forms when you just click just a second when you just click on this plus green plus button at the top of your right workspace. So. Just a second, I will demonstrate it to you. Yeah, so if you're a user, you just click on this button here, switch to request, and you will see the list of all the request forms that you, the account of your, uh, the, the admin of your account, sorry, has already created. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next question we have is from Debbie. Uh, is there a way to group forms by folder? Uh, Debbie, could you please elaborate a bit on this? So if you mean uh, the requests that were made with the help of request forms, then the answer is yes, because you can set a particular parent folder for uh, different uh, forms and maybe even for different answers to the same form. But if you talk about the request forms themselves, then not, but you can uh, set up a particular sorting order with the uh, prefixes like letters and numbers in the beginning of their names. Uh, next question is from Eric. Is it possible to populate a form through automated process like XML file? Uh, short answer, not at the moment. Um, so another question we have from Seveta. The attached webinar handout has only one page in it. Would you be able to send another one with all pages in it? I guess you mean the deck that we were showing you at the middle, uh, at the beginning of the session. Well, we're not <laughs> distributing the deck itself, but uh, the recording of this webinar is going to be uh, available starting tomorrow on our webinar page, rag.com slash webinar. Feel free to go there. Let me actually... Uh, paste the link to the webinar page into the chat so you not spend your time searching for it. Okay, you should be seeing it by now. All right. Um, Okay, the next question comes from Anna. How did you create a dashboard on forums? So if you have already been using dashboards, you probably know that the widgets within the dashboards are built based on a particular folder, right, or project. So in our case, uh, we recommend yet to create some inbox folder for each type of the request that you get. And then when you build uh, a widget within the dashboard, right? When you, um, yeah, so this is the folder with the requests, right? So when you build this widget on this step, when you, um, just a second, when you step uh, on the step, when you choose the source for all the tasks that are going to be listed in this widget, you choose this request 
inbox. And then all the tasks will be dragged to this widget based on the filters that you have applied. So you can just populate your widget with several widgets based on different filters, and all of them will contain the tasks from the inbox of your request forms. Alrighty guys, moving to our next question. So we have a question from Amanda. Will you share recording of the session? Yes, we will. Uh, the uh, recording, as I said, is going to be available starting tomorrow and uh, every person who had registered for the session will also receive an email containing the link to the recording. Uh, what is the best way to, uh, to notify the requester when the task is complete? Huh, that's a tricky one you have asked, Martin. So I would say that if um, if the task is requested, you can set up the request form in the way. So it falls into, so the task triggered by this form falls into the folder that you are following. So if you are following a folder, you will receive notifications about actions happening on that folder level. Uh, but no, 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 you will not, you will not get, get anything from that. You will just set, see the folder updates. Okay, so the only thing that you can actually do is to uh, add yourself as the, let's say, second SNE of the task that is being created. So. Uh, if you are the SNE, obviously, uh, you will always receive notifications about everything that's going on with that task. Or the same logic applies to owning a project, right? So the person uh, who needs to work on this task triggered by request form will start performing any actions required, yeah? But then when the status is changed to completed, you, as the second SNE of the task, will also receive notification about that to your inbox and to your mailbox depending on your notification settings. Uh, can you copy or clone uh, forms to quickly version them? Uh, no is fire as I remember but let me check that for you. Um, well, yeah, you can do that. There is a duplicate button so you just need to open the form list um, from the admin's perspective and just right click the form. Um, we have a question from Gigi. Uh, going back to conditional logic question, I don't see that's an option on my request form. I can only add a question and that's it. Can you show how to build that question? Do I have a different subscription of reg that doesn't allow, allow that as an option? No. Uh, you have the totally correct version of reg. And conditional questions are allowed only for two question types. Uh, check box and drop down. So if you create a new question, for example, if I start with a short answer question type, well, no conditions here. I am hovering over the question's name and I can see I can see nothing. But if I add a drop down question type and hover over any of the options, I would see the small arrow. So I click and I start adding any conditions necessary. All right, there is a question from Christine. Um, is there a way to sort requests by date that the form was submitted and not by the dates that the person had entered when they want the request completed? Well, yes, because if uh, the uh, that's actually what I have demonstrated to, to you in this account. So actually all the forms that have triggered the projects here um, they actually fall into a particular folder, so it is request for webinars. So uh, the logic here is simply numerical. So if I submit another form of this type, I will just look for it at the very bottom of this list. We have a short question from from Cat. How long until this finishes? Well, uh, Cat, we're going to talk uh, for four more minutes, so we are almost done. Um, so another question we have is from Angie. Can you show how to create a project from Blueprint? I cannot get this to work in our account. Well, uh, not right now. It's a large topic. We're going to have specific webinars delivered on Blueprints. Uh, uh, by the way, specifically not to confuse you guys with the Blueprints because uh, additional options appear to you in the request form options. We have disabled Blueprints in this demo account. 
um, will you cover template usage? Well, request form, when you just uh, build it, uh, it allows you to uh, choose four different types of objects that this form can trigger. So it is a project creation, a task creation, uh, the creation of a task from a template, and the creation of a project from a template. So here, by the way, we have selected a particular template, so email campaign template. So this is simply a project that we store in a place that it is convenient for us and for our team. And we have selected this project as the source here in the forms settings. So whenever a form is submitted, uh, it triggers the creation of a project from this particular template. Well, uh, no, nothing to add really here. Uh, if you want us to elaborate, please specify what exactly you, you would like to learn. Uh, if not, uh, we have another question from Sierra. Um, the question is, if not everyone is on right at our organization, can you use a link for them to use the request form? Yes, the answer is yes here, right? So when you look at the settings of the uh, request form, yeah, we have discussed that this is a possibility either to make it internal or to add a public link here. Right, so if you need to share a form with someone outside of your organization, just check the box um, against the enable public link, then copy this link and provide it to the person that you want to submit this form. And that's it. So here we are opening this link and here is the form. It looks pretty much the same as it looks within the right workspace. And once this form will be submitted, then it will trigger the necessary item within your right workspace. All right, guys, last question for today. I'm sorry we're not able to cover um, everyone's questions, but again. Um, so we have a question from Lisa. Uh, how did you get the branching? Are there only some option, uh, some question types that it is available for? So yes, uh, I've already answered that. Uh, branching is only available on uh, the drop-down question type and checkbox question type. All right, guys, so uh, I'm sorry that we are not able to answer all of the questions, but we are running out of the time. We want to keep up to the time slot that we have promised to you in the very beginning of the webinar. Uh, so the last thing that we would like to recommend here is for you to visit our community, which you can find at track.com slash community. So you can actually post your questions there um, and uh, you can find answers to complicated questions from the right expert, from the right gurus there. So thank you very much. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Thank you for uh, bombarding us with such a huge number of questions. It's great to learn what use cases you have, what problems you are trying to solve with Rike. And it was really interesting to communicate with you during this webinar. So I hope you attend our other webinars and ask the expert sessions that you can find at track.com slash webinar. For example, in the beginning of March, we are going to introduce the four of building block of Rike, which is spaces, and we're going to have an awesome session on spaces. Uh, and yeah, I, we wish you the most productive rest of your week. Yeah, thank you so much from my side as well for being that active and for joining this session today and being with us. And we wish you a lovely rest of the day. Thank you. Goodbye.